The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too And welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis of McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin. Squeaky clean hands, McElroy. Listen, everyone, these are dark and difficult times. They're uncertain, you know? So I think we need to find the silver linings where we can. And uh, there is a new, I'm going to say, historic human accomplishment this wow. week. Yes, right? Let's focus on what humans can do when we believe. Uh, are, are you two, and I guess our audience, are you aware of uh, Britney Spears? Yeah, I've heard yeah. of her and her great music, Toxic, is very good. Toxic is very good. Um, she makes the good music, but you know what? She also uh, has broken a record. Um, she, she posted on Instagram that she ran the 100 meter dash in five sec five point nine seven seconds, beating Usain Bolt apparently by four seconds. Well, the, okay, here's here's the one thing about that: there's uh-huh. nobody in her way, so oh. that's not exactly a good. Usain Bolt has to bob and weave around the whole. Right. I, it's funny. I I was excited to uh, that you brought up Britney Spears because. Um, it is Britney bitch, and she is here to sort of rearrange our society in a more idealistic way. He, she yeah. did she did post something about how uh, we need wealth redistribution right now, uh, and that's odd. That's pretty cool coming from Britney Spears and yeah. her big snake uh, that she is going to use to uh, destroy capitalism. Well, so and at this that, point, she is she is the fastest human being in recorded history, right? She's so, so she fast. Could, big snake. She could be a modern day Robin Hood, stealing yes. money and then running, just be, like a, like a, a, a modern day. Like if you cr- cross the Flash with Robin Hood, she runs up. To I don't know is one of the Koch brothers still alive? I think he is. She takes his money bags away and then she's gone. She's gone. Nice try. Right? Nice, n- n- good job trying to catch her. It's not going to happen. She it has mechanoid legs. I did not. T- if you were to ask me which celeb was going to be Furiosa uh-huh. in this whole in this whole Picadillo, I yeah. I wouldn't have guessed Britney, but nope. f- I, I, I but of course shit, it is but Britney. Fucking, of course it's Britney. Yeah, she yeah, is unstoppable. 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 Nothing has ever stopped her. Well, stalled. Maybe she, a stall. She for had a hiccup. Time. She got a hiccup in her giddy yeah. up. Don't we all? But look Don't at her all. now, the fastest human being alive, redistributing wealth with the help of her intelligent cybernetic snake. <laughs> Unstoppable, uh, and uh, I I can't wait to see what record she breaks next. Maybe it'll be like uh, hot dog eating, or perhaps uh, world's uh, longest nap. Or because after you run, I you assume gotta lay down for a bit. Yeah, you yeah. gotta take a nap. Because if I ran uh, the hundred meters in under six seconds, I would sleep for probably four years. Can I read the post uh, that Brittany put up? On, on Instagram, just a little portion of it. It was uh, yes, it's absolutely. A, it is a quote from Mimi Zhu, uh, this, this whole big block t- of text. Uh, at one point, it says, uh, technologies like virtual communication, streaming, and broadcasting are part of our community collaboration. We will learn to kiss and hold each other through the waves of the web. Whoa. That's fucking Whoa. great. We will That's feed each so other, good. redistribute wealth, wealth, strike. We will understand our own importance from the places we must stay. Communion moves beyond walls. We can still be together. Damn. If you seek Amy, I do. And here she is. And she's going to fucking put it all back together once it all gets broken down. And it's going to get broken down a little bit. And Christina, we're waiting 
Christi- Mandy yeah. Moore. Mandy Moore. We are waiting. Mandy Moore has always stayed out of it. That's the thing about Mandy Moore. You know, she's been in the game forever, but keeping it low key. And I'm like, hey, Mandy Moore, it's time to take a stand on something. What do you believe in, Mandy Moore? Jessica Simpson has taken a lot of stands over there. Too yep. many, some might say. Yep. But, but she has been willing to die on so many hills. Samantha, right? well, Samantha Mumba, where are you? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, here is a here is a story for you. Britney Spears' boyfriend reveals she broke her foot while dancing. But this is from February 2020. Wait, what? Wait. Hold on a second. Wait. Britney broke her foot a month ago, and now she has just broken the world's. Re- what an inspiration! She, she's the Flash and Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, I'm glad we have a beacon to look to. Uh, I wish we could rename 2020 because fill your life with laughter and love seems like a, a genuinely irresponsible uh, motto at this point. If it could just be um, look to Britney Spears. 2020, look at Britney. 2020, <laughs> look to Britney. What's that in the sky? That shimmering light. There's a new North Star. It is Britney. What's that up in the sky? It's a snake. It's a flight attendant. No, it's Britney Spears, bitch. Did it, I say that right? It's the. There was like a nanosecond too long pause, actually. Oh, uh, damn. It's, and it's. I don't think you can say it's Britney Spears, bitch. Because uh, that's. It's just. You lose the alliteration. I don't think you can say that word at all, actually. Aw, uh, man. Basically, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Can I say like snitch? It's Britney. Yeah, it's fun. Britney Spears. She has the snitch. She's so fast. <laughs> she got it. She st- she wait. I'm seeing this right. Britney doesn't have a broom. <gasps> she's just kicking it and running so fast <laughs> that she took off like Mario. Oh my god. Wow. Fuck. It's Britney, Britney snitch. Spears. I wish this show. Do you think we've missed a trick by not making the show more about Britney Spears over the years? I'm realizing I find it, her yeah. genuinely inspirational. Yeah, yeah, we could have been tracking this whole thing because she says she started her first try at the hundred meters in her pose was a nine, was nine, which was Usain Bolt. So she did that and was like, "Well, I'm as fast as Usain Bolt, but that's not enough. That's not enough. I want to lap this, dude." What's uh uh? I was looking at uh, a story now that you brought this to my attention. I, I did a quick Google, and they were saying how on her uh Twitter when she posted this this revelation, several of her um followers just posted uh, commented like, "Huh, impressive time," or "Great time, Brittany," or "Impressive time." <laughs> so nobody fucking knows anything, huh? <laughs> this is a good reminder that fucking nobody knows anything about what they're fucking talking about, right? Right? Because like. Yeah, so you do know that it's a good time. Yeah. You don't know that she just broke Usain Bolt's world record. Right. Well, they could I, they could infer that it's a good time by the fact that she posted it because it was right. Like, okay, yes. yes, and it's it's few. It's a few number of. It's seconds. not a big number of seconds. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like I did my first hundred meter death, and it's like a minute and forty five seconds. But even I that, have no I, idea how long a hundred meters is. Yeah, yeah right. Frankly, if I saw that without context, I might be like, oh, cool, <laughs> good job. <laughs> But then again, uh, if somebody posted like I did a mile in two and a half minutes, I'd be like, "Oh, great time!" <laughs> a hundred a football field is a hundred yards. Yeah, and I think a meter's right. bigger than a yard. A mm-hmm. yard's a meter. A yard is a a yard is a meter. Oh. A yard's a, a a yard to a meter conversion mm-hmm. is yeah, it's about a meter. So that's about she a meter. ran a whole football field in sorry, Travis, four seconds. Well, five five point nine seven seconds. So just a uh, just a hair under. Six that's seconds. quite. That's quite good. Well, she's been training for it. She like this doesn't. Hey, it doesn't come easy, Griffin. She Thank didn't you. roll out of bed and do this. You know what I mean? People like, forget this. They they think of her as a they think of her as like a performer for this is like what I think it was recently discovered that like Rod Stewart has been building model trains. While he oh, has yeah. like been on tour, this is like that. It's like he doesn't, she doesn't want to be known as Britney the performer anymore. That is her side hustle. Her main hustle has been becoming the fastest human being in recorded history. Right. Um, how about we do a? I would quite- like to see Britney Spears race against one of Rod Stewart's trains for ultimate oh, dominance. Oh my god! But a big one. Do you think he's got a big, like a real life side train he gets to yes. ride around in, and only Rod gets to ride around in? This we is my one for one model train. <laughs> we for sure talked about Rod's trains. So let's. It was no, it was a touchstone, but like, 
I'm wondering how Rod is sort of processing, because Rod, I'm sure, like everybody else, including some of your favorite podcasters, had some pretty profitable shows canceled by this uh, 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 unpleasantness. And that does fr- that's very bad for Rob, Rod Stewart. does free him up to work on the trains pretty good, though. So I'm wondering yeah. sort of where he's at. Uh, on this on this whole thing and obviously i'm sure rod stewart not a known psychopath <laughs> sees it as a net negative <laughs> yeah <laughs> not, there's no question right. about this well, point after, i'm not right ra- after the shows were canceled he did have to start using the trains to transport actual cargo right to kind of make up some of the money the differences he he spent a lot of it on glue justin a lot of yeah. that money went to glue um, I, before we hop into the news, I, or, sorry, the oh, news. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> On no. our news God, program. no. God, Jesus, and God Jesus, in heaven, no. and Buddha, and Anything all them. With that. Please, no. Before we hop into, like, questions and stuff, did want to give everybody a little bit of, uh, good news. Jimmy Buffett also had some, uh, uh, shows canceled, but he is not stopping. He's doing a virtual tour, the Cabin Fever a virtual license to chill the spring oh. 2020 tour on uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays. He's going to be streaming out a bunch of live shows for everybody to enjoy at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern with an encore at 8 p.m. Pacific. You can see this at Margaritaville TV. We're not being paid by Jimmy to say that. I just want to give everybody a heads up. If you want to take a chill little break, Saturdays and Wednesdays, 8 p.m., uh, you got li- you got a license to chill right there. Do, so uh, now you, heads up. Do not call just at eight p.m. Eastern Wednesdays and Saturdays. And, <laughs> and eight- my stories are on. Yes. <laughs> uh, my coworkers and I occasionally order in food for lunch. The other day, I gave a woman ten dollars for lunch, but she accidentally had it delivered to her house instead of our office. Let she me be clear here: money. these are also from the before time, right? Yes. Oh, okay. When are we going to start getting questions from the after times, Travis? Well, we had a lot saved up, Justin, because we went on the Joko and we had recorded a bunch of episodes. And I'm not going to burn good questions just because they're How- from a long begotten time. These are shelf stable questions, Justin. Yeah. What, how how are we to advise? Are we to advise them in the context of the now? To advise I them in the context of the future? I haven't forgotten what life was like. It's yeah. not gone from my memory, Justin. I could dream. A man can no, dream. No, no. I'm like I'm like the gorillas in instinct. I think freedom is just something <laughs> I dreamed. <laughs> Fucking love that flick. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins phoning it in. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Good flick. Good flick. Uh, my, <laughs> so we ordered food for lunch. The other day, I gave a woman ten dollars for lunch, but she accidentally had it delivered to her house instead of our office. She gave back the money, and I thought we were square, and that she would just eat it for dinner. On Monday, she brought my food in for me four days after it was delivered. I feel bad that she's out ten dollars, but I'm not going to eat it. Should I pay her for this old food, or are we good? Huh? That's from Alex in Minneapolis. P.S. It was a Middle Eastern salad with chicken and hummus. Okay. That ain't mm. gonna hang. That's that no. ain't a four day hang, is it? No. But what it's, is But what I is, mean, I guess. I'm not yeah. saying you need to throw I'm saying that if you have not been able to witness the life cycle of this food, right? Yeah. And then it is brought to you, there are so many points of failure along the way. <laughs> exactly, yes. Uh yes. It was sitting on the porch at least for a while while you were at work with them. And then I guess it was over the weekend, and you know Susan got weird on the weekend, and your yeah. fucking your your Middle Eastern salad may have been in, and I apologize, but the splash zone. There's like no fucking way, dude. We Susan had this food delivered to her home instead of your office. We don't know a lot about Susan, but I can say one thing concretely: she's a careless person. Yes, yes. and I don't think I don't think this is the sort of person you trust with food hygiene. Yes, correct. And I would say, hey, Susan, if you're listening, weird move to bring the food in on Monday. That's a weird one. Susan knows that. This is not news to Susan. Now, is she out $10? Yeah. Yes. But that's that's good. Because you need to, she needs to have some sort of loss. She needs yes. to experience mm. loss. She needs to experience a $10 grief right right now. And then she will be a little bit more careful to 
press that little button and order food to the right place. I one of two. I'm confused by another facet of this question. Okay, the order was placed by Susan, and maybe there's more clarity in the question, Trevor, that you edited out. But the order was placed by Susan. Was it for one meal for Alex? Hmm. Was Al- did Alex have Susan order one discreet meal for them to enjoy? Because there's a we've we've added a, an unnecessary middleman here, a middle Susan, if you will into this process because that is an order you could definitely handle yourself oh. the alternative is susan was placing a bulk order and <laughs> she showed up to her home to find a big hot stinky pile <laughs> of mediterranean <laughs> food oh, man, uh, just if you on her stoop if you knew you were coming back to a house with a porch full of really any kind of food that had been sitting in the hot sun all day like I, if i was susan i would just like five o'clock closing time everybody's leaving they see me still at my desk working like hey Susan it's it's closing time and then I would say like well n- no I don't have a house anymore that house is yeah. the raccoon's house uh, there's raccoons <laughs> and one big bear that I guess is kind of like their dad and they all live together and the bear it, like helps them uh, bathes them keeps them clean it's really cute but like I wouldn't survive in there for even a second so oh but now I showed up after 48 hours and it seems they didn't touch your salad Oh dang! Oh, sorry, Alex. We, we've all we're all concerned about our health right now, and but I don't want there's there's uh, yeah food safety can't go un unattended. I do want to remind folks if you're between forty and one hundred and forty degrees, that is the danger zone. You do not leave food in that zone for more than four hours and then consume it. And I can't. I've been running a lot of different simulations here in a program I have right. on my computer. And uh, even being generous and saying this is an office where they had lunch at one and then Susan got home by five, it, it's still been in the danger zone too long. You got to trash it for sure. Trash See, it. Real quick, can we just for a moment acknowledge that there is a delivery person that this food was ordered and they knocked and it didn't answer and they were just like, I'll leave it on the porch. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa. That happened <laughs> protocol, right? That can't yeah, be that- protocol. What else are they going to fucking do with it? Steal it? No. What are they going to do with it? Go make it snack? Yeah. I don't They're, know. In their van? Hey, listen. This is me. This is like a living will that I'm leaving here. That if you ever deliver food to me and I don't answer the door, it's yours. Or if it's me Beautiful. and you're delivering the food in my house and I don't answer the door, you wait. Because I will be there at some point and I will be so hungry. <laughs> uh, hey, I have a Yahoo. Okay. Uh, a few people sent this one in. Uh, it's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call Yahoo David asks, how did the first parents know how to take care of their children? Wow. I mean, how do how do parents now know how to take care of their children? Books, you know? internet, other parents that oh, have right. been doing it. Yeah, there's a lot of institutional knowledge out there, Travis. Songs, nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes. Daniel Tiger. Old books. Old books that are kind of more like what not to do. Like Bible is pretty much, there's a lot of stuff in Bible that is just like, hey, <laughs> not that, cautionary right. tale, don't do this one with baby. Um, I, I bet there was a lot of like angels showing up that first time around. God was mm-hmm. like, you're on your own. And then well, Adam and Eve had babies and God was like, oh <laughs> shit, okay, wait. <laughs> Do you go down there and tell them not to give them marbles or whatever? Right. There were a few babies before. A guy was just like, nope, they'll get it. They'll get it. They'll get it. Just calm down. They're going to get it. All right. They're not going to get it. Get down there. Okay, Gabriel, just real quick. Do you go down there and tell them to cook that food? Oh, please. Do you think that that the first people, let's call them Adam and Eve. Do you think that the first people who are the first parents, do you think that they maybe started to pretend they got it less than they did just so they could go on dates and shit. Like, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I'd love to watch the kids tonight, Gabriel. Damn, uh, let me just put them into the stove. No, no okay, uh, you're right. Damn it. Ah, okay, so we'll be at TGI Fridays. Here's the be- here's the hospital's number. <laughs> they would, I mean, it would be tough, right? Because it would be like, God has given us this great baby, and we love him so much, but God has also given us a tree stump with a perfectly baby-sized hole in it. So I think that that is like the storage unit that yeah. we, I think that it, right. it, it didn't come with baby, but I think, I mean, look at, look, thump perfect fit like a perfect, perfect satisfying fit. fit so like if god didn't want us to jam our baby in this log 
and go out to, uh, you know, the Cheesecake Factory, then why is the hole that way? Mm, good That's point. Good point. Do you guys think that there was some point where the first people, the first parents were like, you think this thing eats? I think that that is true. I'm more concerned about just baby just like poops on itself and the ground or whatever. And then the parents are like, hey, um, I know he's like little and stuff, but this baby is not cleaning his butt the way we all clean yeah. our butt. And it's pretty <laughs> fucked up if you ask it's me. It's gross, right? <laughs> it's gnarly, right? We can all agree that. Should we talk to him? Like when I do it, I go outside and we don't have TP yet, but you know, I'll use a big leaf. <laughs> And this baby doesn't even go outside. It doesn't, no, he does, right? He doesn't know how to use the clamshells. Nope. <laughs> I use the clamshells. We have these three shells that I use to clean my butt, and he doesn't use it, right? Yeah, he doesn't use mammoth bidet, where it blasts your butt with his uh, big gnarly <laughs> trunk. And it's I mean, just it's like, a living. It's a living, but like, what? It, I think it's kind of rude, and I would, I would actually like to ask him to leave. Can you oh. go ask Fred Flintstone what he did to get his kid to use <laughs> their bidet? I mean, Fred Flintstone's kid beats the shit out of him all the... Oh, wait, that's Barney's kid. No, that's Barney's kid beats yeah. the shit out of him all the time. Man, that's, His, that's rough. Fred's kid's got a serial deal. Yeah. She can't be seen to yeah. doing that kind of thing. Um, Here is another question for you, my brothers. I'm pretty sure my neighbor sells weed, and I really want some. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah. I've only ever smoked with friends who had their own weed, but I'm an adult now, and I have to get it for myself. <laughs> I know very little about him since he's a few years younger than me and we didn't talk when we were in high school. I don't have his phone number and we're not friends on social media. How do I find out if he actually has the good kush for sale? Please help me. I really want to blaze it, but I don't know how to get weed. That's from wannabe loner stoner. And boy, have you ever come to the right place. <laughs> I, I think it's important that we do a question like this every every year or so, annually or so, just to remind people that we don't fucking know. We yeah. don't know if I, it would be, hey, everyone alive, it would be pretty fucking cool if I knew at yep. this, at this, at this junction, it would be and pretty cool. I, I'll take it one step further uh, and clarify for those listening. Not only do I not know where to get weed, I don't know how to ask somebody where to get weed. So like I am now in a position where it's like, I don't know where to get it, and I'm too afraid to ask, because right. I'm pretty sure if I walked out to another human being and said, from whom might I purchase marijuana? They would be like, oh, you're a cop. Well, um, you can you not, Travis, can you not buy it? Well, I mean, listen. For, what, hey, you want to cut through the bullshit, Justin? Yes. Yeah, bud. I can buy that medical shit, and I do. But I'm saying that's not cool. That's not a cool feeling. Right, that's not. Uh, that, I think it's pretty cool. I, think it's pretty I like how neat. I like how you can't be arrested and it's not weird. No, that is cool. Listen, that's cool. But I, I never mean, you could had be arrested because the federal statutes have not changed. Yeah, it's, it's just a state up. state. I'll I'll explain it. It's the whole thing is listen. If they weren't paying attention before, they sure as fuck are paying attention now. Okay, so go ahead and go. Just go nuts. As long as your weed dealer isn't selling to nine other people at the same time. I don't think Thank they can you. I don't think they can touch you. Maybe there's one of those scenarios where you can just say like, "Hey, do you sell weed?" Because I bet if they do, they're happy for the customers, right? Like if you're someone who sells weed, you like selling marijuana to people, right? Think like that's you're you're probably looking for new customers, right? Right? It's so you can't know. Here's the problem, right? No, this is incorrect. You're actually wrong. Oh, because man, if they're I thought I was on to something. No, you're wrong. Because if you if the if you're wrong, then you're gonna put them into a position where they're like, "What am I putting out there?" Um, right. In my day to day, where it makes it seem like I'm a person who's selling weed, and that's not a bad or a good thing, but it is like that's not my identity. I don't think. Like, I don't know that that's my vibe. It's a it's a weird vibe to put out in the world. If I'm not, should I? Like, should I? Am I missing an opportunity? Well, but but here's the thing. In this day and age, everybody's selling something, Justin. So oh, maybe it's not weed, yeah. but you're like, hey, I'm, I'm, do you sell weed? And they're like, no, but I do make, you know, handmade hacky sacks or whatever. And I'll okay. sell them to you. And you're like, oh, 
Okay, so now I need to find somebody who's looking for hacky sacks to trade for weed. But then you find somebody who's like trading hacky sacks for like crochet patterns or whatever. And eventually you will find somebody who will take your, uh, I don't know, uh, your antique waffles uh, for weed. Antique right? waffles is gross, Trav. Well, I meant like from an antique waffle maker. I didn't mean like they were super old waffles. Oh. You were just, I think, I feel like you're you're also risking falling pretty deep into a, a multi-level marketing thing. Yeah. Like, do you sell weed? No, but I got some fucking choice LuLaRoe. Uh-huh. Let, I'm so glad you asked. Let me open my sample case that I always have and you thought was full of weed. I, but actually it's LuLaRoe. Here's the thing I would warn you about, question asker. You don't have any connection to this person. Doesn't sound like you had any interest in being their friend, even though it sounds like they live next to you. And so I think maybe get to know them, or if you don't want to do that, don't can't. don't open up uh, the relationship with one of a uh, bartering uh, quality because I, I think that would put some strain, uh, no pun intended, on the the neighborly relationship. I guess, of course, you should hold off on sort of bridge building right. for a little bit. Right. You just want to get that out. You there. could set up though, like maybe a pulley rope system between houses. Would they send oh, over a little so the weed? Fucking, so the coronavirus little amoebas can fucking Mission Impossible zip line no, from you. one house to the no, other? Dun, 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 dun. Oh no, Jeremy fell. It's okay. There's a billion of us. Go, go, go. Fuck. I forgot. You're right, Griffin. I forgot because I had watched Osmosis Jones the other day and that is how that works. Listen, just get it. Just get a trench coat. Turn on the in your eyes and stand outside their window with your bong above your head. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> until they- <laughs> In my lungs, I need some weed in my lungs. <laughs> yes, indeed, in my lungs. Uh, uh, the, the, I hate to interrupt our program, but oh. we do have to take a, a brief uh, sojourn to the money zone, if you guys would be so kind as to join me. Okay. Here, hop on my back. Travis, you hop on my back. <laughs> Griffin, you hop on Travis's back. Okay, here I come. Oops, I jumped all the way over the two of you. Oh, and I cleared you by like three or four feet. Let me try again. Whoop! I did it. Oh wow, even higher that time. Wow, the damn powerful jumping. These damn powerful legs of mine. If Brittany, if Brittany had my height with her speed, she could, she Forget could about uppercut it. the sun. She actually just got a call to uh, to hear about how high you're jumping, and she's like, "I can beat it." Hey, I know we're trying to go to the money zone, but Tra- Trav, hop off there. You're gonna hurt yourself. Okay. Oh, I know we're but- trying to go to the money zone real quick, but Travis Minshaw is Moses Jones. That brought something to my mind. Uh, there are movies trending right now, like uh, 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 Contagion and Outbreak and the like. I always see it, like in my trending shit on, sure. on streaming platforms or whatever. And I don't know why a person would watch one of those at this moment. Um, but why isn't Osmosis, why, how is Osmosis Jones not crept in? Like, how is this not the moment we need Osmosis Jones and his funny uptight pill friend yep. to like come in and kind of provide maybe even a little bit of a how to, like a funny joke and animation and loving that, but like also maybe there's something you can take away there that would be helpful at this junction. In that movie, you know, does a white blood cell and one cold pill be, is it SARS? It's something like it's that, It's something right? pretty bad, yeah. Uh, I, I, I bet Griffin, uh, David Hyde Pierce has begun every morning just firing up that trending and be like, let's see, <laughs> is, is, it, is it? Oh, no, no all right, okay. not right this second, all right. So now? Yeah, we now. Need, okay, Travis, get back up there. Whoop. And then I'm gonna get. Oh, I didn't jump uh, high enough in that time. Oh, ow! You laying around my back. Let me try again. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go get a step ladder. You guys start without me. Okay. Honey, where's the step ladder? Oh no! That's in the. Oh man! Did we? What a vibrant palette. Oh shoot. Uh, here in my neck of the woods, uh, restaurant like a lot of places, I think, uh, dine-in restaurants aren't uh, aren't aren't keeping it going right now. Can't 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 kind of do that dining in thing. Uh, so it has been a actual genuine huge relief to have DoorDash uh, available in our neighborhood. And what I uh, have really appreciated is it gives us a way to support local restaurants. Uh, here using DoorDash, you it, it couldn't be easier. You you open up the app, 
you find what you want to eat and it's brought to you in, in in my experience always in a speedy efficient manner and they got a lot of it's not just like the big chains they got a lot of local restaurants on there too so you can you, you know keep kicking them some uh, money at a time when they when they really need it and you get delicious food it's really it's 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 a win-win and all the drivers have been uh that cannot be an easy gig right now uh they gotta be busy busy and they have been so kind and uh always a smile uh and it's it's been a wonderful experience to have so right now our listeners can get five dollars off their first order of fifteen dollars or more when you download the doordash app and enter code brother that's five dollars off your first order when you download the doordash app in the app store and enter code brother get me undies go get them Acquire okay. them now. You can. Uh, you don't have to leave the house to get them, which is good. You shouldn't be leaving the house. Uh, and if you're going to be kicking it around the house, you may as well be doing it in the most fucking comfortable garments available that are made from the micromodal fabric, uh, which is a uh, just it, it is a it, listen. They use science and synth weave technology um, to compile these powerful underpants, and they got a, a variety of ranges from extra small to four XL. Uh, I, I wear them every day and they keep me, uh, safe and dry down there and comfortable down there. Ooh. And yeah, it's like my PP's at the spa. So to get 15% off your first order, free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee that your PP is going to feel like it's in the spa, go to meundies.com slash my brother. That's meundies.com slash my brother. Uh, you know what I've been doing, fellas? It's really helped keep my spirits up. Is I've been getting dressed every day, uh, even though mm. I work from home and I could keep my PJs on. I put on some new clothes, and let's be honest, a lot of those clothes are coming from Stitch Fix, and it makes me feel like I still have, you know, purpose uh, and things to do, and that I'm capable of doing that. I hadn't thought about what a hard adjustment this must be for you, Travis. I'm sure you miss your your crew at the office something fierce. Well, it's just that, you know, Dwight's always making jokes and, you know, <laughs> Jim's so serious. He doesn't think anything's funny. Uh, and, you know, it's just I miss them. I miss are you them. Still, are you still in love with Pam? Oh, yeah, <laughs> but I don't know how to tell her. Uh oh. Travis is Roy. Travis is cast himself as Roy yeah. in the office. I but think. in my version, I'm the hero. I'm right. the blue collar worker who everyone respects because right. of my heart of gold. And Jim's a real bully. And he Anywho, fucking is. He is, in, he is in the real. We can't unpack this right now. Yeah, we can talk about this later. But he, why is he so mean to Dwight? Okay. Not all clothes. <laughs> now I'm just going to start at the beginning. So Stitch Fix is a styling service where their personal stylist will ask you questions like, do you like this? Do you like this? Does this fit your style? What do you think about this? And as you answer those questions, it is going to hone in your style so that it perfectly matches you. Then they send you a box uh, with five items in it. You try them on. You say, I like this. I don't like this. Oh, can I get this in a different size? And you can return whatever you don't want. And you don't pay for what you return. And you only pay for what you keep. And uh, it's that easy, and it's really cool. I love it very much. We all love it very much. All of our friends love it very much. So go to stitchfix.com slash my brother, answer those questions, and the personal shopper will send you a box of stuff. There's no commitment required, and you only pay for what you keep. Shipping, exchanges, and returns are always free, plus the $20 styling fee is automatically applied towards anything you keep from your box. So get started today at stitchfix.com slash my brother and get an extra 25% off when you keep everything in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother. Hi, I'm Dave Hill from before, and I'm very excited to bring Dave Hill's podcasting incident back to maximum fun where it belongs. You can get brand new episodes every Friday on MaximumFun.org or, you know, wherever. And while my partner Chris Gersbeck and I might lack in specific subject matter on our podcast, we make up for in special effects. Chris, add something cool right here. Also, we have explosions, animal noises, and sometimes even this. Dave Hill's podcasting incident every Friday on Maximum Fun. Chris, do another explosion right here. Real quick, I, ju I just wanted to clarify. Sorry, guys. It was Anthrax that Osmosis Jones and the- uh, Was it uh, really it was Was it really? Anthrax, uh, it's uh, Lawrence Fishburne voices Thrax. 
Okay, uh, but we know what that means. According to the Wikipedia, a tall, extremely virulent pathogenetic uh, agent. Uh, and uh, just also, real quick side note, uh, Kid Rock makes a cameo in Osmosis Jones as Kidney Rock. Oh, I thought you were going to say, Wow, that's like, good. As a nasty little amoeba man, because that's sort of how he presents himself in real life and i'm not Indeed. fucking afraid to, and i'm not fucking afraid to say it that i think kid rock is a nasty man yep <laughs> Bef- maybe before all this shit broke bad like the before times griffin would like keep his mouth shut because he knows how many people out there love and respect kid rock but i think that like now <laughs> he could be listening I he mean, could be they, listening but like, now i've been emboldened by these by this tough time i've been sh- sh- sharpened and honed like a katana or something, and I'll just say that Kid Rock sucks shit, and he's a nasty man. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Um, I have a Yahoo here, and it's part of a beautiful trend of Yahoos that I've been noticing since people have been sending it in. A lot of people sent this one in uh, as well. And it is, um, it, is, it is Yahoos that have been sent in during the during times. Uh, okay. This one is from March 20th. So I think we can safely consider that the during times. Uh, And it's Dylan. And Dylan asks, my dad bought the nasty hamburger buns. (laughs) (laughs) So like everybody is suffering from this in, in their own ways. Some like much, much worse and much more serious than others. And we would encourage you to find ways to support the people out there who really need your help. But the good news is that none of those people are on Yahoo Answers. Um, because Dylan says, my dad bought the nasty hamburger buns. I hate when he does this. I hate when he does this. When he grills hamburgers, there's a specific type of buns I like him to buy. They are small, light mm-hmm. buns. Yes, yes. I like light buns and I cannot lie. <laughs> I like the way he's put in commas here because it says they are small, comma, light, comma, buns, comma. <laughs> These buns are buns. Since the burgers are never too big, they get smaller when you cook them. That's just burger physiology. Uh, he bought the freaking big dark buns. The bun is bigger than the entire <laughs> patty, which means when I bite, mm. I will be biting into the bun and it's dark, which I don't like the dark buns he buys. What should I do? Oh, man. Oh, jeez. I mean... Hate to see that. I think it's important to be, um, you know, not not necessarily conservative, but like thoughtful about the food that you have and um, the the food that is able to be circulated among the the community. Um, and, but at the same time, biting into a big burger and getting worse and where's the beef? Like, oh man, is there anything fucking worse than that? Oh. My my heart. My heart goes out to uh, this this person's father. The so the supplies are the selection is pretty slim. Uh, I went to the grocery store recently and brought home whole wheat tortillas, and you would have thought that I had vivisected a baby deer in front of my family because they were met with such disdain <laughs> and utter disgust. These whole wheat tortillas that no one wanted and sit untouched. I brought I brought home a big pack of. Uh, Uncle Ben's dirty rice, uh, instant an instant pack, uh, and Rachel was like, "What the fuck?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, maybe, maybe we're a dirty rice family now. Maybe we're gonna get, maybe we're, maybe we're gonna have a season of jambalaya, and that is how we will look back on this. But the big buns, guys, is there anything we can do? Obviously, we can get we can cut the buns, but then the edges aren't bigger meat. No, that I mean, compromises the integrity. The daddy can't make bigger meat." The daddy knows how to make one type of burger. It's like you can't, you can't, you can't unprogram that. And um, you know what? Me like a slider. Oh, Travi like a slider. Travi like a slider. That's Make me Tra- feel like big man. When Travis first went to Applebee's and they were like, hey yeah. man, we got sliders. And he's like, what's sliders? The show? I love that. Jerry O'Connell, kick I ass, did, dude. Yes. Uh, and they were like, no, no, no. It's like three burgers that you eat instead of one. And then Travis was like, my, that's my whole life now. Three burgers instead of one burger? Okay. Where do I sign up? Is there some sort of license I need? Some sort of registry I join? No, but if, if there is some kind of slider agency, I I would love that. Did you say bigger burger already? Did I miss bigger we burger? We talked about bigger burger. In. 
Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure I got in with Bigger Burger. But we talked about Bigger. We said. Yeah, but I no. didn't want people to wonder if I thought Bigger Burger was a good idea because I hadn't agreed, so, you know, vociferously that like Bigger Burger is a great play. Okay, I because at least I did the whole me like a slider thing. Bigger, but the slider is a smaller burger, so I think you. No, got but a that's lot what I'm saying is I don't there. know, but I don't want a big. I, no, Justin, sorry. Uh, can you step over here, please? <laughs> <laughs> Justin, hey, you guys go do that. Oh, can I, wait, can I close the door? This is going to be bad. Yeah. yeah, You close the door. I'll keep doing the podcast while you guys sort of talk it out. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let me look at the camera real quick so they know that it's like, oh, boy, here we go. Justin, what I was saying is what I, I like don't to want a bigger burger because I like burgers. A smaller burger. I, mean, like I was specifically, I was specifically so it looks like a cool saying that making a bigger burger would Although make I guess me angry because up, I like a slider. Do you understand? Do you get it? Do you fucking get it? It's not helpful. You're not helping. No, but it, I I was going down an avenue, Justin. I was looking. I'll clean out my desk. I'll clean out my desk. Thank you. I'll clean out my desk. I'm tired of doing this. Oh, hey, tired of doing hey, this. I'm tired whoa, of getting whoa, whoa, this treatment. No, hey, you could hey. eat the. No, 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 you no. could eat the. No, no, you no, could no, squish hey, the is bun. A, you don't have, How did you get in here, Griffin? The powerful ball. <laughs> I closed the door. You heard me virtually close the door. Why are we creating so many audioscapes in this episode? It seems like we're leaning on audioscapes more than normal. Um. Da, 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 okay. Baby. Speaking nasty hamburger buns. I want a munch. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Um, <clears throat> my feeds are filled currently, not with menu innovations, which is a cornerstone of the Munch Squad, uh, but uh, just a lot of restaurants that are trying to do something i mean a lot of these can we live brands, stream a taco is, is that anything uh bud you're not that far off oh, um actually travis uh, you must be reading ahead rob gregowski <laughs> is gonna join uh chipotle for thursday's virtual hangout <laughs> so everybody's kind of wondering what they can do right and uh, there's a lot of brands that are just like how do we Bojangles step in and try to do something <laughs> about this. What is Bojangles' role in all of this? And I can safely do that because they closed the Bojangles in Huntington, so nobody can get me. You can't, you can't do anything to hurt me, Bojangles. We will learn to. I'm invincible. We will learn to eat Bojangles and hold each other through the waves of the web. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Gronkowski, Gronkowski is going to join Chipotle for Thursday's virtual hangout. While people face ongoing challenges of spending time apart, Chipotle wants to connect with its fans and deliver some much-needed positive vibes. Chipotle is teaming up with famous brand superfans to host Chipotle Together. The, yes, they're both in caps. Chipotle Together, a series of virtual hangouts for fans <laughs> oh that God. feature celebrity appearances, exclusive content, and free entree giveaways. Oh God. Folks, before I go too much deeper, I want to say... If someone says, what are you doing today? And you say, well, I'm going to hang out with Chipotle and Robert Gowski <laughs> virtually. That is very much a second month of quarantine answer. Yes. Like, we will accept that. And say, I think Chipotle thinks people are a lot more desperate right, right. now than they are, maybe. It's, it's been like a week and a half. We're hanging in yeah, there. Yeah, like, this is for spitballing new hobbies, right? Like, you've just taken up knitting or painting. And, but by April, the knitting stuff's in the fucking garbage. And you're fucking burritoing out with Gronk. Yes. Now, here's what I will say. Uh, if the pitch was, we have overstuffed this burrito, and you're going to watch Rob Gronkowski try to navigate it, I, yeah, yeah, that's maybe a third yeah, week. ASMR, that, yeah. that might be a third week of the quarantine thing. Yeah, they've just, I, th I feel like they've jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, Thursday's Chipotle together. It's scheduled for 2 p.m., so you missed this one, but I'm sure there's going to be another. It's going to feature football legend Rob Gronk Gronkowski and wrestler Mojo, who will host a 30-minute at-home workout for fans on his Instagram, um, participate in a Q&A, and give away 5,000 free burritos. Now, I'm going to assume it is a coupon and not <laughs> some sort of elaborate, maybe drone-based burrito delivery Or pneumatic system. tubes. Or orbital cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Funk. Ow! Gronkowski has the nuclear football, which he loves. 
and he will use the orbital cannon to blast big, big burritos right down your chimney like a Santa Claus would. (laughs) Chipotle has rolled out a series of innovations to elevate the delivery experience for its fans, which is a wild way of saying this. But they, um, so they've got delivery kitchens, which feature dedicated teams and ingredient stations to prepare digital orders with care. Good. The second thing it says is new tamper evident packaging seals to help ensure food is untouched during delivery. Ooh. Can we stop for a second? <laughs> has, has this been, hey, Chipotle, hey. can we talk over here? Uh, has this been an ongoing concern <laughs> that you're just now alerting me to? Have you been aware of a problem with food being touched <laughs> during delivery? You should have shared this information with the rest right. of us. Yes, right. We, I, just so we're clear, I'm not loving that during the coronavirus pandemic. I'm also similarly not loving it before and or after. I really, if you had the one knowledge of this problem and two ability to stop it, it's morally delinquent that you have done nothing about it to this point. We have finally, and, we have finally begun encouraging our employees to stop slapping the sour cream when they open it to test the surface tension. <laughs> Why? That's the thing. Unless you can offer me a tamper-proof like thing that lets me know it wasn't touched while it was being made either, I think there is still an opportunity for contamination there. Because my concern wasn't that the person driving it would be like, I want to see what they got on their burrito. <laughs> yeah, let me pop this open real quick and get a real quick touch going. It's going to take stock of whether they got the Pico de Gallo or not like no i don't think that's the concern i want a tamper evident burrito where if you open it it just fucking explodes and showers you in refried beans like a like a uh, a bait bag at a bank or something like that <laughs> this is our bait car but it's a burrito and if you even touch it the cops will swarm uh how about another question how would that treat everybody yeah it sounds good Good, good, good. A duck has recently set up shop and laid eggs in the bush directly outside the only door to my apartment. Nice. The problem is, every time I come home, the duck flaps away panicked and stands in the parking lot staring at me until I go inside. Aside from the near heart attack this caused me the first few times, I feel bad for repeatedly alarming this duck and interrupting her egg-sitting routine. How do I convince this duck that we're chill and that I want nothing but the best for her and her future ducklings? That's from Duck Disruptor in Tennessee, a very considerate human being. How Damn, do you I wish for the duck. Damn, I wish we could talk to ducks. Damn it! Right? Mm. Think Damn of all it. the things we'd learn. Think of all the things we could teach them. Damn it! Uh, our two societies, the duck and the human, would improve by leaps and bounds if only we could break this damn communication barrier. I see a bunch of ducks hanging out at the park. I want to tell them, like, guys, no, go home. You need to fucking chill right now, ducks. But they don't listen to me. I bet there's a lot of ducks out there that are like, man, I miss bread. Yeah. <laughs> you guys remember? <laughs> we didn't appreciate it when they would throw dumb goldfish crackers at us. Ugh. I loved that. I should have told them when I had the chance. And I could speak English this whole time. And I should have told them. What if the only word they know is quack? We just haven't taught them other words. Right? Because they say quack. Whoa. And that's like a word in English, right? Quack. Well, there's a one duck that says Af- Aflac. He is a goose, but they're the same animal as we've No, he's discovered. a duck. Is he? Yeah. He's a, yeah, he's a duck, isn't he? Yeah, read a book. Well, g- no way of knowing. Geese and duck. Justin, are you with me on this? Not the, They are the same animal. They're the same. One's a stretched out duck. If someone's taller, is, is if it, Benedict Cumberbatch is taller than me, I don't say there goes a human too. You know what I mean? Just because his body's a different right. shape. Well, That's fucked up. There's no proof that he's human. But there is what I'm saying, Griffin, is that you could maybe convince me Swan is Big Duck, but Goose is not Big Duck. We can't relitigate this, Travis. I'm just saying Swan is like attractive Big Duck. It's the goose bridge. Is, a it's goose the, is a whole other thing. It's the genetic bridge between these two incredible birds that no matter what, we can't talk to either of them. So it's there's no point arguing this. But argument. what if we could find, we can talk to parrot, right? So if we find a parrot that can speak duck, that could be the in-between. Here we go. Here we go. Wait a minute. Travis, that's a big idea that we need to just slow down <laughs> off for a second. <laughs> what Travis is suggesting is... Parrots speak a human. Yeah. <laughs> Parrots speak a bird. Yep. 
is this the missing link that we've we've been needing? We just haven't asked. It's a really good point, actually. So I go to the park with my pet parrot, and I say, parrot, you got to warn these ducks. And then I hear the parrot, you know, make incredible bird noises that my stupid human ears can't even understand. And then I just kind of see one of the duck's eyebrows go up like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no, oh. And they scoot on home. Thanks for warning. They tell their friends. All ducks are now, like, just fucking safe and in lockdown. Who's this parrot? Who is this sea biscuit parrot? Is it just all parrots? Do we need to start, like, a network? Well, no, because I, you wouldn't, one, not all parrots speak duck. Uh, but also, like, do you trust? All, like, that's saying, like, I would let anyone translate for me in, like, an important negotiation between two countries, right? We're going to need to find, like, an even-tempered, trustworthy parrot where, like, this par- I know that this parrot isn't taking liberties in the translation and isn't, like, uh, he told me that, like, to tell you he's cool, but he's a real turd. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. How do you how do you trust a parrot? There is no good answer for that, except for you don't. You no. can't. Well, you would have to find a duck who spoke human that the parrot didn't know that the duck spoke human. That you could be like, all right, duck, what did he say? Uh, I mean, I've never asked a duck to honk into my phone using Google Translate. Oh like, shit! I, like I haven't tried it, and it probably yeah. I'll be the first to say, ninety nine percent chance it doesn't work. But if there's a one percent yeah, chance I can get out there one and just sort of ring the 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 clacks on for these incredible animals, um, I'm going to I am going to risk it. Now, Griffin, if a scientist came to you and said we figured it out, but we only have enough power to generate one message to the ducks, what get would out! You say? Get out of there! Okay, but in uh, in what context? Get out of the bush. I mean, it's so like, get out of there, wherever they're at. Yeah. Well, then where do they go? Are you just saying, get off the planet, ducks? Okay, fine. Come to my house, ducks. You'll be safe here. But I don't feel like that is going to, like, you need to say, like, trust me because now come to my house. Trust right? me because I have some bread. Not a Ooh. lot. But all ducks, please report to Griffin McRoy's house. This is mandatory. Or well, you now we're in a pun- <laughs> or Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Dear all ducks, please report to Griffin McRoy's house address here. And uh, immediately, and I'm not even worried about like putting that address out there because this will be in duck language. So yeah. like human beings won't even understand it. And uh, come to my house. I do have bread. This is mandatory. If you do not come to my house immediately, you will be punished with duck punishment. And Ooh, that's the worst kind. The ducks, and, and you're saying now, and this is a long message, but you didn't say how long it could be, but I haven't put a period in yet. And you may be wondering mm. how Griffin knows what duck punishment is. Well, the ducks who do come to his house are going to tell him, and then he will turn that knowledge against the rest of you. So it's time to choose your side. The line has been drawn in the sand. Which do you want to get through this thing and hang out with me and have a kick-ass duck party and eat some cool bread for like a day before I run out? Or do, are you going to do duck punishment? The choice is yours. Love, Griffin. And if that doesn't save these fucking, these beautiful, beautiful beasts, then they're not worth fucking saving, are they? Okay. Well, it's all clear to me now is that you want the ducks to social distance away from humans. Or, or I've been social distancing, so it's cool if they come. To, if I'm understanding correctly, the doctors online and the ones that like come on the TV now and talk at me all the time, they did say it's fine if you're isolating. Go ahead and have a billion birds over to your house, and yeah. you should be okay. Well, that'll be good because up till now, ducks have been so aggressively social with human beings. They have no yeah. idea that they're not supposed to like go to the movies or anything. A little too friendly, yeah. if you ask me. <clears throat> so I think that answers the question, right? I mean, it's pretty well fucking answered, Travis. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, My Brother, My Brother, and Me. We hope that you are staying uh, sane and hopeful and home and uh, still managing to uh, keep your spirits up during these challenging times. We're glad that you've chosen this entertainment product. As your as your constant companion, it it uh, we're so happy to be here with you. Um, normally we'd plug something here, <laughs> but we uh, won't. I'll plug hey. John. I'll plug John Roderick and the Long Winters, who let us use their theme song, our theme song. It's a departure off the album, putting the days to bed. So yeah, go get that now. I mean, get it digital. Get it digital today. 
Get it digital today. In, in months and months from now, when I'm sure everything will be back to normal and fine, the Adventure Zone graphic novel book three is going to come out. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. That's a good one. You can pre-order that at theadventurezonecomic.com. Just take care of each yeah. other. Yeah. You know, wash your hands. Oh, 2 p.m. Two p.m. Thursdays. Other. Tune in for Gronk's Burrito Hour. Yeah, I'll be there. I, and it starts in 23 minutes as we're recording right, this. We gotta, so I got to get dip. I got to wrap it up. I got to get my tuxedo right. on. Oh, and real quick. So uh, uh, we're doing our first ever live streaming Cincinnati Underground Society show. Usually only people in the Cincinnati area can come, but now anyone can watch. Uh, it's going to be this Friday, uh, the 3rd, April 3rd, uh, 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and we have a huge lineup of guests. It's like 10 or more people, including some people who you might recognize uh, from some macro shows. Mm, hint, hint. It's a surprise lineup, but I promise you they are all incredible. Uh, tickets start at $5, but proceeds go to charity. Um, we have we have chosen a charity that provides uh, equipment and, and supplies for healthcare workers responding to COVID-19. Uh, so it, it's a great cause, and it's going to be a super fun show. Uh, you can get your tickets at bit.ly slash cuss live. That's bit.ly slash C-U-S-S L-I-V-E. Uh, this Friday, 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Be there. It's going to be super fun. Thank you so much for listening. Griffin, do you have a final Yahoo I do, I do. Uh, for us? I don't know who sent it in, though, because it got the that part got deleted. And we're holding this thing together with twine and tape, but I apologize. Uh, it's asked by Yahoo Answers user Yeet, who asks, How does one spoon an angel? <laughs> 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 my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother. May you kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.